Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Evan E. Flex Boyerman and welcome to this new video. A new series, I guess, is what it's going to be. Um, I'm going to be breaking down the orchestration and instrumentation and the layers of my Battlefield 2042 soundtrack, the fan soundtrack that I did uh, for when the game came out. Fortunately, none of it was used in the game, but hopefully in the future that'll change. Now, the track I'm going to be doing today is going to be the End of Round Soundtrack 2, which is my most popular one on the soundtrack, which is the fight for a home. But before we get into it, I do have to talk about the sponsor of the video, which is The Ridge. The Ridge makes these cool minimalist wallets that uh, have a lifetime warranty on them and they got all these cool designs on their website. This one I went with was carbon fiber. You can hold up to 12 cards in here and on the back, you also have a money clip on there, which is really nice if you have to stack some cash in the back, which I don't have any because I'm broke. What they also do have on their website is these cool uh, individual money clips that you can get on the website. And all the wallets on the website all have a lifetime warranty. The size of these wallets is probably the biggest plus of this because I can put it in my pocket, not feel like I have a giant hockey pad in my pocket. And also this has RFID protection so no one can come by and just scan the stuff off your cards and steal your information. Which is something you gotta be worried about these days. Now right now, if you do want to get a Ridge wallet for your father for Father's Day, uh, or just even for yourself, uh, there's a deal going on. If you go to the link in the description of this video, I have a link there. You click on it, and then you could use the discount code EFLEX, and you'll get 15% off your next order. So you can browse any of the many products they have on their website. You can use on anything on there. You got different kinds of wallet designs, money clips. Thank you to the Ridge for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to the video at hand.
right, so that is the playback of the track. I'm sure you've heard it already if you follow my channel, if you follow my music. Um, so the, the kind of the, uh, I guess the feel that I wanted to go for on this was more like a, I guess, uh, more of a rhythmic and like playful sort of thing. Because uh, I did get from like when they revealed the game itself, even though it was like a future battle or whatever, um, it kind of had like undertones of like it being a little bit, uh, just a little bit like, um, goofy, not really like the goofy, goofy way in terms of like, like Fortnite goofy, but like, um, it just had like a, just like the rhythmic vibe, I guess, of the, like the reveal trailer kind of gave me that similar vibe of what the game would be. And, uh, I kind of wanted to go that route, but also have like the chords and stuff like that be the same as like a rising tension, like through the whole thing while you're playing the match. And I didn't have um, a post like after the end of round thing, like I usually did like with the B battlefield one ones uh, just because I wanted the focus to be like this, just the build up, pretty much of the whole of the whole, um, track as it was going on and um so one big inspiration actually for this soundtrack was actually the tomorrow war if you listen to that soundtrack by lauren balf it's a really good soundtrack you should check it out but uh a lot of the music in that was uh when i was listening to it it kind of had that same feel that i was i was kind of going for or feeling as well so I kind of took some notes from that soundtrack and I applied it to this when I was making it. Um, such as like the, the build up here for the violins and the strings. Pretty much the actual orchestra section is like building up these chords. Or like all these chords are building and building and it keeps going to build that tension in, in the track. And a lot of the... So let me actually play you the, the strings here. Uh, probably towards the end bit here. So that was kind of like the melody, building melody, and then also I added some bits in there to kind of help it go a little smoother in terms of the melody, uh, so it wasn't just a straight climb up. It's kind of trying to vary, vary it a little bit in the melody so it doesn't just sound so like just playing chords on a piano, you know, the whole time. Um, obviously it still has that quality, but it's kind of what I wanted to go for, except I wanted a little bit more of a movement to it than... Than just that and uh so and also majority of this track a lot of it is it's got heavy like to me it sounded like it's got like reggaeton vibes like where uh like kind of the groove of some of the instruments like i could show you here the the synthesizer i used in the beginning with the drums uh towards the beginning here so this synth right here which is actually it's omnisphere which I use this plugin so much. Uh, it's like, it's one of my favorite plugins to use. So yeah, this is the Omnisphere uh, layout right here. This is probably my, like I said, this is my favorite like synth um, uh, synth slash sampler that I like to use. Uh, it's got a lot of good like sets in there and everything like that. But uh, the one that I was using for a lot of the groove in it was this here. And 
And I don't know if, if you've listened to reggaeton music, you can kind of hear that kind of that rhythm that's kind of going with it. That dun, 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 da, 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 dun, dun, dun. And also a lot of the, uh, the synths in the beginning are also Omnisphere as well. Just a straight, like, ostinato just playing through the whole thing. Which, I always liked the, uh, the ostinato sound of, like, synthesizers and stuff like that. And so I wanted to put that in here, um, because I used to also, when I made rap music and trap beats and stuff like that, there would be a lot of, like, ostinato y kind of, kind of keys that I would do in my, in my beats that I would make. And I kind of wanted to do that with this one, but it also gives it a kind of a, kind of a moving motion through the whole thing. And also the, the drums were like a big part of it to kind of give it again, a rhythm. Um, so like, I think for the drums I was using, um, what was I using here? Yeah, I was using Damage 2, which, again, really, really good drums to have uh, just around. Uh, and then I layered that with a couple of other samples, which is the Alphias, I think that's how you say Alphias, and then the Low War Drums and Darbukas. And again, you can hear that that battlefield rhythm, you know, that they have throughout all the soundtracks. The da 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 da. But it's the just the rhythm in the drums, kind of like they've been they've been doing in the past few games. Now is what they've been doing with the soundtracks is using the rhythm uh, rather than the actual like melodies and stuff like that. Well, no, that's not true. Maybe Battlefield One they did, um, but um, but a lot of like their trailers and stuff like that, like, they like to use the rhythm. Um, of it instead of the actual melody, which is a little disappointing, but I mean, I do like the rhythm though of, of the battlefield music as well. And so, also in the beginning here, um, when it's building up here, I do have also like strings again, um, playing that you know, the classic battlefield melody, which I think is it's just a really good melody. I use that in a lot of the battlefield music that I do. So that's the melody that's playing being played in the beginning. I also do have a a synth that I uh, programmed on Zebra, which um, Zebra is, it's a really good synthesizer. Uh, a lot of people in doing film music and stuff like that use it a lot. Um, and it's actually, I think if I remember right, it's relatively cheap, so you can buy it and you can do a lot of things with this. I mean, this synth that I built, I mean, it was really simple. Uh, it's like an ARP, but I mean, it's just a, just a one oscillator with 11 voices, pretty much, which sounds like this. So that, I mean, that pretty much plays throughout the whole thing. Uh, Again, it gives it a really good, um, like a moving, like rhythmic vibe to it through the whole thing. Kind of like doing like counter, counter rhythms to like the main bump, bump, kind of like the bump, 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 just throughout the whole thing. And I also have other, other synths layered with that, especially this, uh, one that I like a lot is this reverse sounding uh, pad that's on Omnisphere. Which I, I do use this in, in some of the other tracks in the 2042 soundtracks uh, that I, or the 
other tracks that I do to give it the same vibe and, you know, make sure it's part of the same soundtrack still. And, uh, and then I kind of, uh, give it a, towards the end or the beginning of the second part. Again, I had to, I just, I had to put in that, <laughs> that battlefield, uh, melody in there and the, the rhythm of it, um, just in a modern context, I guess, uh, a lot of it is composed of the horn section and an ensemble of strings, which I use a lot of Spitfire audio stuff. The Spitfire audio strings are, it's like the, the Lamborghini of samples to me. It's like. Once, if you can get these, then you can pretty much make almost anything with Spitfire stuff. So if you're starting out, I would really recommend trying to get the Spitfire audio stuff first. Um, just because it's, it's just a lot of it, a lot of it, the stuff is just really good quality and not sponsored or anything, but I wish I was. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, in that I just had the horns and the strings. I just like that build up at the end, the, the dun dun dun, just a triplet, just dun dun dun, just <laughs> spring up there. And then also I layered that with the another Omnisphere synth, which I was using earlier, which is uh, that ostinato that I was talking about right here. So that and the strings, it just pairs really well together, like. And then it goes back to doing the ostinato on there along with uh, the other synthesizers. So I am back. Um, I had to change the memory cards and all that stuff in my camera. I was running out of memory. And uh, so I, where I was was at towards the end here. Uh, the one synthesizer sound that I really, really liked that uh, I would say is like the signature of this track is, uh, again, it's an Omnisphere one. Um Apologize. I apologize for all the stuttering and stuff like that. I'm, I'm doing this right off the CPU, so not everything's like loaded in correctly. Um, but, um, but yeah, this patch in in uh, Omnisphere, I just really love the sound of it. It kind of reminded me of the the soundtrack in the new Spider-Man movie, or not the new Spider-Man movie, but the Into the Spider-Verse movie, 
when Daniel Pemberton, he had a synth in there also for, um, I don't remember. There was a, there was a villain in there. I forget the name of him. It sounded similar to this. That's the first thing I thought of when I heard this synth, but I really like that synth sound in that. Uh, so that's what this is here. <laughs> So you can hear that, that's like the high, in the high uh, middle C up there, and then the beginning, it's kind of a low middle C. Um, and so towards the end, you pretty much have everything just all working all together. You just have the, uh, the taikos and the drums and everything like that. Then you have the the synthesizers and the this is the strings that I layered I layered with the the synthesizer sounds to give it more of a more depth um, than just having the synths on. So you got that going, and then again with the. Uh, deep bass on there for the for the uh synth there and then the one that i created which is following the bass line of everything else to make sure that it doesn't become muddy in the low end it's kind of all just flowing together uh usually if you try to put two different melody lines like really close together in the lower register of stuff it starts to muddy up and sounds really strange um, that's why I, a lot of the times when I do like bass lines and stuff like that, I try to keep everything either in unison or in fifths or, uh, somewhere out of each other's range. So it doesn't do, do that. Um, so that's why I, a lot of the stuff, like when you're doing bass lines, you want to layer stuff and make it sound bigger with layering and putting it in unison. Um, rather than trying to make chords in the lower register, because most of the time it's usually not going to sound that great. Um, I mean, I know there's some, at some times you can get it to sound really nice when you have the chords in the low end, but um, it's just a rule I kind of follow some, a lot of the time on there. Um, but with all that said and done, you basically, you get the final product on there, which is the track. <laughs> Also, as you can see on the on the side um, here, I have for the for the actual orchestra, I have horns, bass, trombones, trombones, trumpets, low brass. Which, by the way, this is from Cinebrass Pro. Yeah, this is from Cinebrass Pro, and I just really I like the the sounds that they have for their monster brass. It's just so down there, just really crazy down there. And they have, when they said they made it, they had like a bunch of different low brass just playing together. And it gives it that really growly sound that a lot of like trailer music and like just a lot of epic music just has um, as its uh, instrumentation. And also I have the Chimbassi playing a, a rhythm towards the end. Um, which is really, it's Chimbassi is just really down there, really brassy sounding, which I like the sound of it, but it kind of gives it a driving rhythm as it's going on. And 
so everything that that's in there it just works together really well like in terms of the cord and how it was um built together so like show you all the gray notes that are on here this is pretty much whole cord here starting from the bottom down in the base here all the way up to the higher register which is c's here for the high strings and you pretty much have the bass and the cello playing fifths along with the uh, the the brass as well. Um, just makes a really nice nice chord progression through this whole thing. Like I said, I like the like the climbing aspect of the chords that were on here, um, just giving it more of a tension or like a rising tension. But then it also has like that hopeful feeling to it a bit. Um, as it's rising, um, and then just kind of ends on a, just a relieving note because, you know, it's, it's over. It's the end of the round or end of the battle, you know, whatever you want to say, uh, for that. And so that's pretty much it. This, uh, I mean, this track is, it's really not super huge in terms of like its instrumentation. Like I said, I just have pretty much one instance of like the orchestra in here. I have just one section of strings, one section of brass. And a lot of the rest of it is like an ensemble patch for uh, strings. And also a lot of synthesizer sounds, which is again, the ostinatos, the bass lines, and then the, the one that I programmed on there along with the drums. Um, so it's, it's, it's just got, it's, it's one track that I liked when I, when I made it because I liked the, just the rhythm of it. It was just, I just like to have rhythm, especially to like action sequences, which is kind of what this is. It's like, you know, end of round is really just an action sequence. So, and I, I just wanted to have that rhythm in there to kind of have that, uh, rhythm of the battle in a sense. And, uh, I think I achieved that with this. And I think a lot of people enjoyed this one because of that also. I could be wrong, but I think that was the majority of the reason why people liked it was because of the the driving rhythm of it and also the 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 scale sound the sound of you know the whole orchestra all together just playing big chords and that climbing tension that's in there and all in all um I think this was a really good um good video um for, for this um, and explaining the layers and stuff like that on, on this track. Um, I do want to see if you guys want to see more of this kind of video, uh, like me breaking down any kind of my, my tracks or um, maybe even in the future, maybe watch me make a track. Um, so you guys want to let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see more of this these kinds of videos. And also share, make sure you like, and then you can subscribe. Uh, the Battlefield 1 soundtrack is coming out uh, this year. I don't have a set date yet. I've got some family things going on right now, so I can't really give a specific date. But it is going to come this year. And so keep an eye out on that. And um, I will see you in the next video or next release. Alrighty. Bye.